Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But 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 what 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 we didn't catch, uh, you know, we say it all the time, but God had me break that in, break it down, go back to the words and look at the words and what were the words saying? Praise the Lord, amen. And then he tied that. Hallelujah. That was that 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 was Psalm 122. I gotta jump. I'm I'm sorry, y'all. I just gotta jump to it right quick. That was Psalm 122. But he also had me tie that back, hallelujah, to uh, uh, Psalm 118 when uh, the scripture said, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I, I want to find the actual verse. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, show me where it is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. This is, yes, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let me tell you, God gave a breakdown of what those words were as well. And uh, I found out that, you know, there's a whole sermon, there's a whole message in those two verses. And what it comes down to, the culmination of those two together is move forward. Amen. Get to move it. Hallelujah. He tied it even to uh, Joshua 1 and 8. Uh, jo excuse me, the first chapter, second chapter, third chapter of Joshua and talked about get prepared to move. It's time to move. It's time to stop looking back, stop looking forward. Moses is dead. It's time to look forward. It's time to go forward. And yes, there's an obstacle in your way. Yes, there's a situation that you may be in the flat middle of, but God is in the middle of it with you. Hallelujah. God gave us a great word this morning. What I love how he ties it together because when I came on the line, they were praying and their, their scripture for the day, they spoke of both the Psalm 122 and the Psalm 118. Hallelujah. And then in their comments and testimonies, they talked about moving forward. They talked about situation, circumstances, and being in the middle. So it all tied up when I came back with the word. Amen. It was all tied together. God is saying a word today. And let me just share this with you. Move forward. I know it looks like things are all discombobulated. Step on in it. He's with you in the midst of it. When the priest stepped into the Jordan, the water split up. And the people went across on dry ground. Come on now. Go on and step into the situation you're in. You've got the authority, the power of, of a powerful God. Hallelujah. And he loves you. And if he did it for them, he'll do it for you too. Glory be unto God. Let's talk about this sword of the spirit. Amen. That's what we're going to talk about today. I believe, let me check. I believe we are now live in the, um, hallelujah, on the page. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. It says we are live now. Praise the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. And at the same time, I want to make sure that we are in recording. Yes, we are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray right quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Glory be unto God. We thank you for this is the day that you have made for us to rejoice, to be exceedingly great glad in. You've got plans for us, Lord, not to harm us, but plans for our hope, plans for our future, Lord God. And as we yield ourselves to your instruction and move and follow your presence as you lead the way, we'll go a way that we have not known before, but we'll find ourselves in the midst of of your promises. We thank you right now, God, because you go before us, you handle our enemies before us, so that when we move into our place of promise, Lord God, we can move in and knowing that you are right there by our side. So now, Lord, as we talk about this sword of the spirit, I'm asking that you would download and revelate the word according to your will, your plan, and your purpose for your people. This last Sunday of the year 2020, Lord God, we know a new era is commencing. It's the beginning of an ending, and it's the ending of a beginning. And we thank you right now, God, as we go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Praise our God. Yes, 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 yes. So let's talk a little bit about the sword of the spirit. If you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to grab this other Bible. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. It, it, it's a little easier on the eyes. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter six. Yes, we, you know, I'm doing things a little um, laid back today. Amen. God told me I didn't have to get all uh, formalized and structured. I could just flow. Hall hallelujah. Would y'all mind if we just flow with the Lord today? Come on, Dr. come Carrie. on. Let's just flow. Hallelujah. Dr. Carey. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you said turn to Ephesians 6. Well, yes, guess what? The verse of the day is Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Look at that. Uh, really, really, really? Yeah. Now, you said your verse of the day in your, in your daily um, Bible study? Well, I have the I have the the um the U version, the Bible, you know, the Bible app. Okay. And I just turned to it, and that was the verse of the day. And wow. it's put on the full armor of God. Yep. So this is a message <laughs> that was ordained to um to have. And the Lord of the Spirit is perfect for what we just dealt with these past two days. <laughs> Amen. Look at God. See, I told you, God, I love when God puts a plan together. Come yeah. on. Always works out. Always, always. Because, see, I, you know, as, as you know, that at first I thought that, the you know, I wasn't going to do a service today. And the Lord said, yes, you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. That's why you didn't get, everyone didn't get an announcement earlier in the week because I knew I was dealing with a homegoing, hallelujah. And matter of fact, two homegoings, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then a third one popped up and I'm like, okay, God, but he says, do the service, amen. So right. look at what God can do and feel, I'm, what a joy, what a joy when he comes back and says, you're in the right place. Amen. That's what he's telling you, Ms. Nurjahan, you're in the right place. Amen. Hallelujah, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I, I wish that the, the service this morning was recorded. I may have to just to, to do the service as a recording because we did it by phone, not by Zoom. Um, right. Because there's a message there for you. I, I, mm -hmm. I hear it. Yes, Lord. I hear you, Lord. I'm going to do that, sir. Do that message for you. Yes, ma'am. So you'll have that message. Amen. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. And then anybody else that wants it, it'll be on the, the um, Facebook page on the Refined okay. Heart Outreach page and also on the YouTube when I get a chance to do the YouTube. It takes me a little longer to get uh -huh. the YouTube done <laughs> than it does to get the Facebook done, but that's okay. Right. Hey, praise the Lord for everybody that is on the line. Amen, amen. I believe I see my evangelist, my friend, my partner, my, my, my support system right there is that Miss Evangelist Caroline's on the line, amen. Yeah. Yay! Amen, amen, amen. My sister has been dealing with some things as well in these last few days uh, of the year and some, and, and you need, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make sure you hear that message as well. I'm telling you, you see how pumped up I am. I got this pumped up because of the word this morning. Amen, hallelujah. And that's what flows right into our topic today, the sword of the spirit. I pray God, if there's anyone that is watching, hallelujah, by Facebook, I wanna tell you, welcome in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And, and thank you for being here with us, praise God. And I, I just, if you have a comment, please throw it in the comments, uh, uh, the Facebook. I may not see them during the message, but I will come back uh, and look at those comments afterwards. And I'm going to try to see it, but you know, this, this delay thing is fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's read Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10, if we would. And we're going to read all the way down through verse 20. Finally, I'm reading out of the New American Standard Version, okay? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness 
against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints and pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen, amen, amen. As I said, I read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 out of the New American Standard Version. Amen. This, you know, I have to be careful with this Bible. It's it's, I've had it for quite a bit of time, and the and and it's interesting how the pages have come apart. The cover has come loose, and I'm you know this is one of the more expensive Bibles I ever bought. It it you know my other Bibles my my you know they hold up with all the carrying and the beating and such, but this one, hallelujah! But I I thank God for it. Amen. Amen. This is one of the first Bibles that that um I used for Bible study. I had Bibles before, but not a one that I actually studied from. This one, hallelujah. And that's probably why it's the spine's broken. It's doing all kinds of crazy things. Amen. Neither here nor there. So let's talk about that sword of the spirit. First of all, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God in Ephesians 6 verse um, 17. I noticed, first of all, that it's paired with the helmet of salvation. You notice if, if you look at the breakup of, the, of those uh, scriptures, it says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Why? Because first of all, you gotta get your mind right. Hallelujah. Your mind is required for a purpose. Amen. We talked about it, about that helmet of salvation, protecting our mind, protecting our thoughts, protecting our eyes, protecting the words, the, 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 the bones of our cheeks so that we can speak, protecting our ears because faith uh, speaks, right? And, and, and faith comes by what? Hearing, hearing by the word of God. So all of this is tied to the word of God, the helmet of salvation dealing with protecting the word that's in your mind, protecting your mouth, which speaks the word, protecting your ears, which receive the word, protecting your eyes, because that which you see as fat may not be faith. Amen. And tie that to what? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I left it in the other room. I did, I did, I did. Um, what I wanted you to understand, most of the time when we think about the sword of the spirit, we think of that big long sheath that they carry. We think about what, what they use when they're fencing, you know, that long where they have to stand back and do the on guard and they've got the, the um, choreographed moves, right? Uh, we think about uh, the, the, the uh, English soldiers and the, the, the uh, you know, the, where you see them um, like a, the Tudors and, and so forth of, of England and what, and you see them fighting with these very long uh, swords, amen. Excuse me, I'm gonna turn this off. My phone is trying to make some noise over here and we don't need any interruptions, praise God, hallelujah. But this particular scripture, when he says, take up, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Let's talk about that word sword. First of all, the word sword there is not referring to that long sheath, that long um, de decorative uh, sword. The word translated there is makara, and it means a knife. 
a slaughter knife, a knife for cutting, a knife used for killing animals, for cutting up flesh. It's a small sword. It's a dagger. Amen. Why would the sword, the word, the word be uh, pictured as a dagger? Because you use the word of God when you're in close contact. When something's trying to get next to you, right? Amen. We're going to talk more about that. But, but you know, we have the shield uh, of faith and we have the helmet of salvation and we have the sword of the spirit. The shield is defensive. The helmet is defensive. Our offensive is the sword of the spirit. But that is a small, it's the small one. It's about, uh, the, the Romans called it the, I believe they called it the gladius. Let me, let me, let me make sure that I'm saying that word right. I, I believe the Romans called it Yes, uh, the gladius, and 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 it, it's a small sort, about eighteen inches, and it's the only offensive weapon in the Word of God. He said, "Why is it only the only offensive weapon? Because that's the only weapon you need. The Word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's living, it's sharper than any two edges. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Because, but 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 I don't want to get ahead of myself. But uh, that dagger, it's a short dagger. I need for you to get that in your spirit. That you're not dealing with something afar off. You're dealing with something with something that's in your face. Come on now. All right. Praise the Lord. So so that sword. And that is being talked about in this scripture is the makara, it's a knife, it's a dagger, it's the small sword, it's, it, it's for cutting, it's for thrusting, it's, it's for slashing, it's for killing, amen. That's what the word will do. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But also I wanted to bring out really quickly before we go forward that in that scripture, the sword of the spirit that word spirit there is pneuma it's the breath hallelujah it's the breath you know breath is what is required for us to live hallelujah so it is the cuttiness of our uh, of our breath hallelujah it's how we form words it's it's what we need to live we need to have the word of god in order to live yes yes because the enemy is out to kill us he's out to steal kill and to destroy you need the word of god to offensively, he didn't say be defensive with the word. Glory be unto God. You need to start speaking some things. Hallelujah. And I'm speaking into the year 2021. I'm moving forward. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it. Praise God. For I know that in the midst of the situations and the circumstances I find myself in now and will find myself in in the future, God is in the middle of it. Hallelujah. He will give me, we're going to talk about that, a word for the season. Come on now. Hallelujah. So the pneuma, the, the breath, hallelujah. But I love this. There's another definition of the word of the pneuma. Hallelujah. And it's the mental disposition. Are you mentally disposed to agreeing with the word of God? Yes, that flips back. Uh-huh. Ties back to the helmet of salvation because I told you, you got to what's your mindset. Well, you got to get your mind right. What's your mind like? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mr. Michael is saying that he got knocked off. He can jo join us on the on live. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So here's the thing. Your mental disposition, you've got to be prepared. You've got to have it in, already in your mind. You've got to know the word in order to use the sword. Come on now. You've got to know the word in order to use the sword. Hallelujah. Uh, give me one second here. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm helping someone get on the message. Because I believe God wants um, him to be, uh, to hear this word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. What's the other word? Uh, you know, it talks about the sword. We said that's the makara. We talked about the word spirit. That's the pneuma. And then it says, which is the word 
hallelujah, the word of God. Well, that word that's translated W-O-R-D right there, hallelujah, most people, a lot of people think it's logos, but no, no, no. Right now in that scripture, the word translated for word is rhema. What is rhema? It is the utterance. It is the individual or collectively or specific matter or topic. It's the narrative. It's the command. It's the dispute. It's saying, Hallelujah. It's commanding. It's demanding. Hallelujah. It's the speaking out. Glory be unto God. What is the truth of the word of the matter? Do you know the word that fits the situation that you are in? Do you have the word as your offensive weapon? Are you speaking into your situations? Hallelujah. And causing darkness to flee for, uh, yes, the light shines in the darkness and the and the darkness cannot overpower it. Amen. For the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and the matter. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. But notice in Hebrews 4 and 12, that word that's translated word there is logos. Hallelujah. It's logos. It's the word having been uttered by a living voice. Hallelujah. The rhema is the act of uttering, the act of speaking, the act of commanding, and the logos is the result, the effect of that word being uttered by a living voice. Come on now. Praise God. When God said it was and he saw that it was good. And we are created in his image and after his likeness. Hallelujah. So when you say a thing, when you decree a thing, hallelujah, know that your words are creative. So if you are speaking contrary to the word of God, guess what you're getting? That which is contrary to what you desire because your words have power. Yes. The logos is that declared thought. It's that declaration. It's the weighty saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It comes from the word that means reasoning or motive. What is the motive behind what you're saying? Praise our God. For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged. So why is it two-edged? Because again, I said, one is the uttering and one is when God tells you, he speaks a word. And then when we say that word, we utter the word, we put the second sharp edge on that sword. Hallelujah. The sword, this dagger, this, this, um, Gladius, as, as the Romans would call it, it, it let, me, let me describe, I need to describe that sword for you. Praise the Lord. Give me one moment. I need to describe that sword for you. Hallelujah. This sword is one in which it says that it is made to, to pierce. It's made to, to, to slice. Uh, no matter which way it can thrust in, it will cut going in. It will cut moving side to side. It will cut coming out. There is no, it is highly effective. Hallelujah. The, the, the Roman soldiers knew when they used that sword, it said within usually three seconds, they could cause fatal damage with it because they knew how to cut quickly with the word. Are you ready? Are you prepared to cut quickly a situation or a circumstance that you have found yourself in? Do you have the word already? Hallelujah. In your spirit, do you already have the word in your mind? Do you already have that word within you that you can cut quickly whatever comes your way? Amen. I just wonder, but we need to use the sword of the spirit, amen, hallelujah. But the question was asked, why the sword of the spirit? Why not the sword of the father, the sword of the kingdom, the sword of the son? Why the sword of the spirit? Hallelujah. But again, remember that is the word, it says the, the sword of the, 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 um, the spirit, the breath, Hallelujah. For, but let's look at something right quick, if you don't mind, before we go a little bit more on that. Let, 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 let's look at, um, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 2. 
Paul wrote a word. He said, having said what no, having seen what no eye has seen, heard what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. He says it in, in verse, I think it's around 10, that these are the things God has revealed to us. How? By his spirit. And then he goes on to say that it's the spirit that searches the things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit? Come on. And then no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Come on now. But what we receive is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God. So we can understand freely what God is teaching us through his word. We are taught by the spirit. So yes, the word is the sword of the spirit because it is the spirit that teaches us all things. It is the spirit that translates the word and gives us the revelation and the application to the situation that we are in. You know, as, as uh, Sister Nurjahan mentioned, that, that the, the verse of the day was, today is Ephesians 6, 11. But you know what? That verse could have popped up at any time, but it is the spirit that gave her the rhema understanding that that, uh, the, uh, that that is applicable for her day today. How often do we see a scripture and walk right past it? But then another day, that scripture jumps off the page. Mm -hmm. And we find that our spirit, uh, the spirit within us begins to agree with that word because the spirit of the Lord, this, the, the sword of the spirit is cutting away the dullness and allowing the life to flow freely in that word. Come on now. Hallelujah. We got to accept the things of the spirit. Hey man, hey man, hey man. Hallelujah. My, my computer's doing some jumping around. I, I pray God that you guys are okay. Because and you can still hear me because it's, it's doing some crazy things today. Amen. That's all right. We're not gonna stop. Y'all can still hear me, right? Yep, and still see you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because I'm gonna keep right on rolling. It's it's doing some weird things again, but that's all right. See, the word of God. The the word is a sword. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the word being living, being quick, being powerful. You know, there's a measure of power in speaking the word of God. The word, you know, I, I believe the scripture says, you know, God says, my word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish the thing wherein to I send it. It will accomplish his purposes. God's word, when it's spoken out, it accomplishes. It does what it's supposed to do. Hallelujah. It's a living, it's an incorruptible seed. It moves, it stirs. Hallelujah. It's vigorous. It doesn't lose vitality. It's always fresh. How often have you looked at a, a scripture? You've seen that scripture. You understand that scripture. You quoted that scripture. You believe that scripture. And then all of a sudden, one day God gives you something else. He peels back another layer of the onion. Come on now. And you see something deeper in that scripture, even as when the Lord showed me that the sword where I had always been thinking about the long sword that I always see, that's always being portrayed. And the Lord said, no, it's a dagger. It's for close. I'm fighting up close. And it's so sharp. And it's so effective. It can rip your enemy to shreds. It can rip that situation to shreds just like that. Come on now. It's powerful. This word is active. This word is powerful. It cuts both ways. It, there's no blunt side to it. Come on. It is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. You can think a thing and think that that's okay, but then you need to look behind why you thought that thought, because there is an intention even behind the thought. We don't often think about what is our intention behind a thought. We say, we get a thought, we say it. We, we think it, we speak it. But what was the intention behind that thought? Hallelujah. What was the motive behind it? Word of God is powerful. It will show you who you are. Yes, it will. It will show you who you are. You know what? Uh, mm -hmm. When they talk about medicine, doctors say that there are certain things, you know, certain things and medications that we take for situations 
uh, that are what they call inert. They have no effect, right? But there, there is filler. There's no filler in scripture. There are no inner passages. You don't have to worry about taking some extra stuff that, that, that is not going to do you any good. Every, the scripture, scripture tells us, you know, and Timothy he said, all scripture is inspired, is God breathed, hallelujah, and it's profitable, it's useful, it's effective, amen, hallelujah. Matter of fact, let me find that little seven, second Timothy, I believe it is. Uh, it might be third first, but let me let me find it right quick. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I believe it's going to be 316, but uh, you know what? That that just kind of popped in my spirit. It wasn't in my notes, so give me a moment. Hallelujah. That's first Timothy. I, I said second. I mean, oh, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now, that was the Holy Spirit talking because it is second Timothy 316. Praise God. It says all scripture is inspired by God. It's profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Why? That the man, mankind, okay, of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. You are not equipped if you don't have your sword. And if you don't know the word, you don't have your sword. Are you studying the word? Are you reading the word? Are you getting a fresh word daily? You need to make sure that you've got your dagger on. One of the other things that I found out about the soldiers, that the Roman soldiers, when they carried this dagger, this, uh, you know, the makara, they carried it on their right side. They never carried it on their left. Even if, you know, they were right-handed or left-handed, it did not matter. It always stayed on their right side. Why? The shield of faith would stay in their left, their shield. So they would walk together, consider, just, just see this picture, would you? 500 soldiers walking side by side, shoulder to shoulder with their shields in front and their hand on that sword, moving together as one unit. This is the picture that God gives for us as believers as we move into 2021. We need to get side by side. We need to lock on with other believers. We need to begin to say what the word of God is saying, the truth of the word, not the facts, because facts don't always tell the truth. The fact is, I may, you know, you may not have any money. The fact is, you may have lost your job. The fact is that you may have an issue in your family. The fact is, your husband may have left you. The fact is, you may be single. The fact is, you might need something. But the truth of the matter is God has supplied all that you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And it is manifesting, call it on in. No, I'm not one of those name it, claim it, blab it and grab it. That's not me. What I understand is that God himself answers when I call him. I can trust him. And when you give God his word, he has to honor his word word but you have to give him his faith his word believing in faith you can't just say a word it, 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 it you know you can't just talk you have to utter the word and how do you utter you mutter to utter what did i mean by mutter to utter the joshua says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but in it you should meditate day and night hallelujah that then only then, after you get the scripture and you get the word, if you as you get the plan in your uh, in your heart, scripture says you need to write it upon the tablet of your heart, not just in your mind. But when you believe it, when you receive it, and when you believe it, when you let the seed of the word take root in your heart take root, grow roots and begin to grow, sprout, bring forth fruit in your heart and in your life, then you will find that you make your way prosperous. I'm gonna read Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have success. Hallelujah. Those of us that are trying to, to do some things and, 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 and 
ch do some changes and and do a business and, and and or trying to build relationships with people or or trying to save a marriage or or, or trying to to uh, become more healthy how do you do it this book of the law now when he's talking about the law he's not talking about the thou shalt not he said the law is the command of God because when God speaks a thing, it happens. It has no choice but to happen because God is all creative power. So when he speaks it, it happens. Hallelujah. He can't lie because when he speaks something, it happens. Hallelujah. Not like us when we don't believe what we say. He always, his word is true. It's always effective this word is cutting when we use the word of god the way it's supposed to be used it will cut through the things the situations the circumstances that our enemy throws our way don't believe me let's go to talk a little bit about the piercing hallelujah i need to add a little bit before we go there because I'm going to go to a couple of scriptures that you guys know very well. Hallelujah. Um, we won't be on here a whole lot much longer, but I need you to catch this. I really need you to catch this as you're going into your 2021, because some of you have been rehearsing, you've been speaking, you've been talking, and you've been saying the facts. You've been repeating what you hear on the news. You've been repeating what you hear on Facebook, what you see on Facebook. You've been sharing all these doom and gloom messages, all these videos, and, 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 and you've been speaking the, that which is contrary to what you want. But I need for the sword of the truth to be coming out, out of your mouth now. I need for you to be speaking the word of God, hallelujah, in your situation. I need you to be on the offensive and not on the defensive. I need for you to, to uh, be uh, aggressively promoting God's and the kingdom of God and not uh, promoting the kingdom of darkness. I need you to be using your, your, your dagger. It's piercing. It's piercing. It has an edge. It has a point like a rapier. The difficulty with some men's hearts is to try to get to it, but the spiritual word of God will penetrate the heart of any natural man. It will pierce and it will bring out the sacred truth. It will show him. It will reveal him. You want to know what's going on? Speak the word of God. It will reveal the thoughts. It says it separates the very thoughts and the intents of the heart, the bone and the marrow. What is the marrow? The marrow is the blood producing uh, material of your structure, of your framework, framework. Your bone is your framework. Your marrow is what generates the blood and the life is in the blood. Amen. So you can be, a, a, do you want to be in the valley of dry bones or do you want to have some marrow? Do you want to have some life giving blood? Amen. Get in the word of God. It will reveal your inner self. It reveals you. The sword of the spirit is very critical because you're in, you're in a battle. You're in a close-up battle. Satan is all up in our face. He's all over us. He's not in a distance. He's got a frontal assault. He's, on, he's assaulting our life, our world, our family, our minds, our circumstances. He's all in our face. And we need to use the dagger that the spirit of God speaks as our weapon. He's, you know what? Satan's allergic to scripture. Yes, I said that. He's allergic. I heard a preacher say this one day, and, and I thought, you know, that's true. He is allergic to scripture. Remember when Jesus was in the wilderness in Matthew 4? First of all, before Matthew 4 happened, Jesus first went to the River Jordan and was baptized and then filled with the Spirit. Catch that, because what did I tell you? It's the sword of what? The spirit. So when Jesus went to the River Jordan and allowed John the Baptist to baptize him, it wasn't because he was being baptized from sin because he had never sinned. We know this. Scripture tells us. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. So it wasn't that he was being baptized from sin. He said, that, let's do this to fulfill the scripture. Because that was a given, that was a demand, that was a command for, from God as how his people were to do what these people were to do as evidence of their decision to follow him. So, so, so to fulfill righteousness, in other words, let's do it right. 
No shortcuts just because of who I am. Oh, that's a word right there, guys. Don't think just because of your position, your, 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 your uh, status, that you don't have to do certain things because of who you are. Hallelujah. Walk in integrity. That's the message for another day. But anyway, when he came up from that water, it says that the spirit descended upon him as a dove and he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the spirit and with wisdom. Here's the thing. Right after he's filled with the spirit, he then goes into the wilderness led by the spirit. Yes, yes. The spirit of the Lord will direct you. And sometimes it looks like he directs you into a situation. He'll direct you right into a problem. He'll direct you right into an overflowing Jordan River. Flood stage. Brought me to the shore. I can't go nowhere. Why what, what, you bring me here? Hallelujah. But here, look at what happened. When the enemy showed up, because Satan is allergic to scripture, and he tried to tempt Jesus. What did Jesus do? He quoted scripture. Yes, he did. He quoted Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. He talked to, to him the Lord's word. He talked to him God's word. That's how we deal in spiritual warfare. That's how we need to have a Bible study with the, with the devil. Yep, yep, yep. We have Bible studies with each other. We need to talk to the, to the devil with the word. Because when we start quoting the devil, he's going to quote those scriptures, the devil's going to back up. Because the devil knew he could not handle the word of God. He can, he can handle your word now. Whatever you say, you can, you can talk all kinds of ways you want to talk. But the devil cannot handle God's word. So have a conversation with him in this way. Speak hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone's knocking at my door and they ought to know three o'clock. I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving scripture. No, I'm not. Praise the Lord. They'll have to come back. Praise the Lord. Jesus was tempted by, they are still ringing my doorbell. Praise the Lord. Uh, Jesus, you guys talk for a minute because that's the fifth door ring. I'll be right back. Praise the Lord. I hate to do this, but give me a moment. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. This is perfect timing for this message. Praise the Lord. Y'all heard me fussing, huh? <laughs> I can hear amen. what you were saying. Uh, couldn't hear what you were saying to them. But nobody else wanted to talk, so it was just me. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I was trying to unmute. I just now uh, found out. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Let me hear what you guys are thinking so far anyway. Praise the Lord. Come on. Well, I think this is what we needed for the end of the year because, as mm -hmm. you know, we haven't had the best year in our country. So right. that's what I think. And I love, I love you, Carrie. I love the way you teach. I love you, the way you preach. I love it. Praise God. Thank you. Thank Amen. you so much. I appreciate you guys being here. Like I said, this is the last Sunday. Praise the Lord. I, I have to share with you, though, the, the, the person that was at the door, praise the Lord, is, is, is my, my uh, brother-in-law. And uh, mm -hmm. he knows that I have scripture. I mean, I have service at 3 o'clock, but he's been trying to reach my husband. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's good that I did go to the door because uh, he needed to, he, he had been trying, he'd been calling my husband and so forth and my husband wasn't picking up and he really needed him. So see, but, sometimes yep. we think one thing's going on mm -hmm. and we need to just stop back up and go on and do what God say do. Go answer the door. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because that situation now is being resolved there and they're talking now. So if you kind of hear some background um, mm -hmm. conversation. I apologize for that, but, uh, you know, God is doing what God needs to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, and I'm glad because apparently my husband was in a place where he wasn't hearing things. So praise the Lord. But anyway, what God wants to let you, let, let, let you know is that the devil will lose if he attacks you when you use the word of God. I'm going to say that again. What God wants you to know is that the devil will lose 
when he attacks you when you use the word of God. Did you get that? Hallelujah. You know, quoting the word of God is and quoting scripture and using that dagger, we can do like Zorro. You know how Zorro does that quick Z, right? I don't know. I might be too old for some, some of y'all. That might be a little too old for some of y'all. But back in the day, I used to love to watch Zorro because he would take his sword everywhere he would. And he would, you know, even when he was dealing with his enemies, he might carve a Z in their chest. He would put a Z on the wall, you know, uh, that says, I've been here. Hallelujah. And that's when we attack the devil with the word of God. It's like putting a Z on his chest. It's a, leaving the God's insignia, letting him know God's here. And you can't mess with this right here. Amen. If you mess with this, you're going to lose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So whether you're a new recruit or a longtime veteran, God has given you your sword. Every soldier has a sword. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, it was interesting when I, I read about the gladius, about the dagger, about how long it is. And they, they say it's about 18 inches long, but they would uh, measure it. They call it a cubit in biblical language, basically measuring from the tip of one's finger to one's elbow. That's the standard measurement. That's about the length of it, that from the tip of the finger to the, to the, the, to the elbow. Imagine, you said, if you have just a little bit of faith. You can make mountains move. Hallelujah. How? Because we're speaking in the power of the word of God. It's not that long saber. Again, I need to remind you, it's that short little thing, but it's, it's unique. It's unique because see, it's, it's light. It's easy to handle. The weight is easy. It's double-edged. It will cut on both sides. You can wield it easily. It's, you won't get falling off balance. Have you ever noticed that when they're they're using those big long swords, they've got to stand a certain way because the balance might throw them off, right? But if you've got just this dagger that's just maybe the length of from your um, elbow to to the tip of your fingers, that's it. That's not going to throw you off balance. Amen. And again, it's always worn on the same spot on the body. So every one of us are to mirror. Hallelujah, the same stance in the gospel. What? Amen. We, we stand with our shoulder to shoulder, with our shields of faith, uh, with our sword and, and, uh, on our right hip. Hallelujah. Ready quickly to unsheath it as we come into situations of battle. When you are in, in battle, you don't keep it on your side. It's in your hand. As a matter of fact, I think there's, a, there's one of the movies I watched where... Um, the the platoon or brigade or whatever i forget what they call them um i'll think of it later but anyway the the gathering the legion yes the legion of soldiers are moving forward and they have their sword their shield and they have their sword and they're banging this the shield with their sword they're saying i'm coming and I'm coming with something that's going to cut you up. You better back up. You hear the word. Can I tell you that as we go forth in the 2021, we need to hold up our shield of faith, knowing that what God says is true is true. And can't nobody do nothing else about it. And then start telling, letting them know, let it ring out. The word is coming. The word is coming. You better back up. Hallelujah, because we are going to be victorious in 2021. Do I hear an amen? We will be victorious in 2021. It is the year of grace, amen. It is the year of release, amen. We need to be speaking that thing, amen. Hallelujah. Know that we are walking side by side, hallelujah. Faith linked to faith, hallelujah. Sword ready, hallelujah, to cut down some things. Don't allow your brother to fall by the wayside. If they stumble, hold them up, pick them up, reach down, grab them, hallelujah. Touch everybody, lock in with the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Use your offensive weapon. Get practiced at moving that sword. Get practiced at wielding the word. But you can't wield the word if you don't know the word. You're going to have to practice the word. It doesn't do you any good if that sword is in the holster on your hip and you're not using it and you're being attacked by the enemy. You need to know the word that fits the situation that you are in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you need to know that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Hallelujah. You need to speak that when things, everything is hitting you from every which, is, which side. And I will say that weapon may be formed, but it's not going to work. I may see the enemy and what the enemy is up to, but guess what? He's not going to get the results he thinks he's going to get. Hallelujah. You're going to have to begin to think, speak those things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Skillfully using the sword. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. Jesus himself said, you know, whenever anybody would come at him, the devil, remember, it, 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 uh, when he met him in this, uh, that's where we left off, when he was in the wilderness, and, and the enemy would say, you know, are you truly the son of God? What did Jesus, he didn't come back defending himself. He just said, it is written. Every response to the enemy was the word of God. It is written. When the Sadducees, when the Pharisees would attack Jesus, when they would question him, when they would try to catch him, uh, uh, he would come back with the word. Have you not ever read out of the mouths of babes and, and supplings? You have perfected praise, Jesus. Uh, think about it. That was a situation where the leaders, religious leaders were mad at Jesus for letting the children refer to him as the Messiah, because really they didn't want anybody calling him the Messiah. And they were getting upset with him about the children calling him Messiah. And Jesus responded to him, them and said, have you never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise or thou hast ordained strength, right? That's in Matthew 21. Well, what was he quoting? He was requoting uh, 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 Old Testament scripture. Amen. How about the time when the Sadducees, you know, came at him with a hypothetical situation and they thought, you know, they thought they had him. Okay, guys, they thought they had him. And they said, uh, you know, they were, they, they were trying to argue against the resurrection. And he said, you know what? Your mistake is you don't know the scriptures. You don't know the power of God. And again, he said, have you not read what was spoken to you by God? He again referred to the scriptures. When things come at you, you need to be saying, have you not read? Do you not know? And quote the scripture into that because God's word will not return to him, boy. It will accomplish the thing where you would say, praise the Lord our God. Hallelujah. The captain of our salvation is teaching us indirectly, but teaching us how to effectively wield the sword of the spirit. How? That we must study to show ourselves approved, a workman able to rightly divide and to apply the word of truth. See, it's not just about head knowledge. It's about application. Wisdom is the application of that which you know. Yeah, I'll say that again. Wisdom is about the application of that which you know. A lot of people have a lot of head knowledge about the word. They can quote scripture right forth, backwards and forwards, but they don't apply it. It does them no good. That's the, the sword that's still in the sheath. It will do them no good. You must have knowledge of the scriptures, yes. And you must apply it. You must walk in it. You must believe it. You must use the scriptures. Amen. Use your sword. But to do that, you've got to spend some time. I'm, I'm going to ask you as 20 and 21 comes in that you make in your daily me uh, method of operation, DMO, as some of us on the line would say, or in our to-do list for the day, or uh, in our mantra for the day, whatever you, you however you organize and prioritize your day. Add in their time to read, to meditate, to study, to memorize the word. Because when you do that and the situation comes up, you then, Holy Spirit can then bring back to your remembrance that word that actually fits the situation that you are in. But if you've never been exposed to the word, how can he bring it back to you? If you've never read it, you never, you know, sometime if you, it, the, exactly what you need to hear is right there on the page. But if you don't look down, you don't see. If you don't crack open the Bible, if it's just a paperweight on your coffee table, then it's not going to do you any good. Use the sword of the spirit, which is, hallelujah, the rhema, the uttered word of God. Hallelujah. The Logos has already spoken. Now, let the rhema, the spoken word that applies to your situation, 
be effective in that situation. I'm going to ask that you would take the year 2021, amen, and begin to quote the word in the devil's face. Hallelujah. He wants you to, uh, let me share, let me share something with you. Hold on, hold, hold on just a second. There's something that I had looked at, I had talked to someone about, and I put a note to remind myself to mention it to you guys. Hold on just a second. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you're talking about temptation and the word. See, here it is. Temptation will come at you so fast. If you don't already have that word in your head, when you're faced with temptation, you don't have time to Google a verse. You don't have time because then that, that seed's been planted. You know, you need to have that word in you. Hallelujah. Because if you don't learn how to use the scripture, you can't answer that temptation. See, the temptation will say, here's, here's what I wanted to read to you. No one will know what you're about to do. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's what the temptation will say. That's what the lie will say. But the truth will answer with the word that there is no creature hidden from his sight. All are naked and exposed before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. That's Hebrews 4 and 13. So when you get the thought, oh, nobody will see me, then that scripture needs to come up in your spirit immediately. God sees everything. And I've got to give an account to him. Here's the lie that you hear. Oh, it's too difficult for you to just go ahead and give in. No, the truth of the word says, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you know, what you are able. And with that temptation will always provide a way to escape that I will be able to bear it. I switched it because I, I say I have to uh, make it applicable to me. Yes, it says that you may be able to bear it, but I, I make it applicable to me. See, when it says it's too difficult, go ahead and give it. No, 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 no temptation has overcome me, overtaken except what is common to me. And God is faithful. He would not allow me. He would not suffer me to be tempted beyond what I'm able. But will, with that temptation, provide a way of escape that I may be able to bear it. That's 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Yes, make it personal. Make that scripture personal for you. Here's the lie that's been said. You'll keep falling. You'll never have victory over that sin. You'll keep doing the same thing over and over again. You might as well just give in. But the word, the truth will answer. Use your sword and says, I am sure of this one thing, that he that began a good work in me, he will be faithful to complete it. He will be faithful to complete it, to perform it at the day of Jesus Christ. That's Philippians 1 and 6. And guess what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. That's what you, how you need to deal with temptation. When the lie comes to you and says your past is too hard and you can't overcome it, you need to answer with the scripture that says, hey, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. I am made new. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Here's the lie. You can't change the way you are. No, no, no. The truth says, oops, wait a minute. I don't have a scripture for that. So then that lie takes root in your heart when you don't have the verse in your head. But let, let me just tell you, when you find yourself in that situation when something hits you and you don't have a word to defend for that, you don't have to fall for it again. It's gonna come back. He's gonna try it again. He's gonna keep trying. He doesn't give up. He's gonna keep trying. But when but what you need to do is get in the word and find the word for that situation. So that when he comes back again and he says, you know, you can't change that's just the way you are. You can go back again and say, I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Old things have become new. That's not me anymore. That used to be me, but that's not me now. The lie will tell you God is trying to keep something good from you. Truth will answer and say, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God and dwell in the tents than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a sun shield. Uh, and because of his favor and his honor, no good thing. I mean, no good thing, nothing good will he withhold from him who walks uprightly. Psalm 84, 11. No good thing will God withhold from me. 
scripture tells me that, you know, God is my father. And, and, and what, if a, a child asks his father for a bread, a piece of bread, would he give him a stone? No. Amen. So no good thing. Hallelujah. The lie says you can't avoid the consequences. Your, your situation is unique. Uh-uh. Job 31 says, listen, Lust is a shameful sin. It should be, it's a crime. It should be punished. It's a devastating fire that destroys to hell, but it will wipe out everything. I'm sorry, I said that wrong for you. I said you can't avoid, but I meant to say you can avoid. The lie will tell you you can avoid. You don't have to worry about it, you know? Your situation is unique. You don't have to worry about the repercussions. You don't have to worry about the things that's going to happen. But the truth of the matter is that there are consequences. The wages of sin is death. And the only way to avoid that is if you are in Christ. If you have willfully sinned after giving your heart and your life and your love to Christ. The scripture says you crucify him afresh and there's no more. Wow. We don't want to crucify him. Hallelujah. Recognize it. Now, so don't willfully. I mean, when I say willfully, sin, that's when you know, you absolutely know, you have chosen to walking away contrary with, with, with the laws and the, with the, the love of God and with the, the, the um, mandates of God. I'll just put it that way. There are some that do that. There are some that have a facade of being righteous and, and, and they have a facade of being uh, of a certain, uh, in a certain place with God, but behind closed doors, they are willfully acting like their father, the devil. Hmm. That's not us. Amen. That's not us here on this line. And I believe God says that in the word, when, when, when you see something and you're not feeling too comfortable, the word of God says, you know, uh, that which is done in secret, I will reveal openly. So you can use that dagger, use that word and ask God to reveal. Amen. Hallelujah. The lie says God must want you to sin. True, God says, God says he can't be, he doesn't tempt me. Everyone that is tempted is tempted by their own lust, by their own desire. And when that desire has conceived, it is given birth to sin. And when that sin is fully grown, it brings forth death. That's James 1, 5, 15. So when you are tempted, let no man say he is tempted of God. Because we are tempted by our own desires, our own lusts. See, this is how you use the word of God against the enemy. Yes, yes. Don't let anybody tell you that your sin will defeat you. Don't tell anybody, rather, that your sin can defeat you on your own. You can defeat it on your own. Help me, Lord, get my words right. Don't tell anybody you are able to fight that sin and beat it down without God's help there. I think I got it clear there. Mm -hmm. The lie will try to tell you, keep, keep, keep silent, hide it. Don't let nobody know what's going on with you. You got some issues. Don't tell nobody. Hmm. Zippy lip. Especially this is the issue for ministers. Because all of sin can fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Just because we're ministering and ministering, we know the word of God. We're walking in a maybe a higher level of knowledge of God. But that does not mean that we don't fall short. That does not mean that we don't sin. That does not mean that we don't have issues and circumstances and problems and certain things that come up. But the lie, you know, the tempter, he tries to tell you, you can't let nobody know you're going through anything. They'll never listen to you again. You're supposed to be all of this in a bag of chips. You can't tell, let nobody see you. No, no, no. That's how he gets you off in, in by yourself and then begins to beat you down. 
The, you know, we talked uh, uh, about abusers when we were talking in our ladies group and we talk about abusers and one of the first things they do is separate you from anybody that cares anything about you. That's what they learn that from the devil. Amen. So the truth of the matter is the scripture says, confess your sins one to another, pray for one another that you may be healed for the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It has great power. It's working as James five and 16. So get your sword out of the ship sheet, get your sword out of the holster. Start memorizing the words, memorizing the scripture so that you can stand against the devil. So that when he comes at you, you can say, it is written, even as Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Answer the lie of temptation with the truth of God's word. Amen. Use the sword of the spirit. Amen. I praise God right now for you being with me on the line. I know we got a little um, out of sorts or out of order, uh, but I pray God that you receive something to as you go into your year 20 and 21. Again, I want to say meditate in the word. Amen. And begin to speak life into your situation. Begin to speak the word of God. Yes, there is the banks of the river Jordan at flood stage. The promised land is on the other side. You are here looking and you're saying, I can't do it. Well, you can't do it by yourself. But when the spirit of the Lord tells you to move and you step into the waters, even as the priest did in Joshua, uh, as soon as their feet touched the water, the water split and the people went across and God was in the midst with them. Why? Because they were carrying the presence of God on their shoulders. Carry the presence of God into your situation and watch it flee. Amen. 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 So I thank you right now. Father, for the word, hallelujah, and I pray, God, that you would continue to speak life to us. Give us the word that fits our situations. Give us the word that would cause us to grow even deeper in uh, our relationship with you, Lord God, and Lord, that would cause us to reach out more even so toward our brethren, toward our sisters, and toward the lost, Lord God, for they need to know that they don't have to be beat up by the devil. They don't have to continue in that situation, but they can walk in the fullness of God. Lord, I'm asking, if there's anybody on this line that has not given their heart over to you, anybody on this line that is not walking in the fullness of the power and the effectiveness of the relationship with Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that they wouldn't speak up even now, that we may uh, make sure that they are connected to the powerful, the all-powerful one, and that they're no longer a pawn in Satan's chessboard. Lord, I pray this in the name of Jesus, and I give you praise for the people that have been a part of this message, for those that will watch in real time, those that will watch and replay. Lord, and if I said anything contrary to the truth, then God, I would ask that you would close their ears to it, even cause there to be a glitch in the message and whatever, but Lord, don't allow the enemy to interfere with the truth. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, I will ask if there's anyone on the line that has not made Jesus the Lord of their life, I would ask that you would just say me. Say the word me. You can do it in, in the chat or you can do it uh, out loud, but please acknowledge it so that we can make sure that as you go into 2021, you're going in with power and authority. Amen. Amen. I'm giving it just a moment for anyone to say what they might say. I see your message, Miss Sharon. Exodus 1414. Hallelujah. And since she wrote it in the chat, I'm going to read it out loud. Amen. And again, this is the New American Standard. I believe everyone on the line must be saved and have a relationship with Christ because nobody has said anything. Amen. Exodus 14 and 14. It says, the Lord will fight for you. 
while you keep silent. Now, let's talk about that real quick because see, we've been talking about speaking and this scripture is saying the Lord will fight for you while you be silent. What is he saying? He said, don't be talking against your own desire. Don't be speaking what you don't want. Shut your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Moses said to the people, do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. And then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. Amen. Now that scripture in Exodus is them coming out of a situation. They're getting ready to cross the Red Sea. They're coming, trying to come out of a situation and there's a barrier there. Sometimes we think as we're trying to come out of a situation, amen, is, uh, that, that, that we'll be told that there's no way we can, we can get around it. We can't get out over that. We can't get beyond it. Uh -huh. and, and oftentimes I hear people saying those words even to themselves. I can't do this. I can't get over it. I can't stand it. I'll never make it. I'll they, and they speak death over their own selves. This is when the Lord is saying, shut your mouth. Hallelujah. You want to come out of that situation, stop speaking words contrary to your desire. Shut your mouth and watch God save you. Watch, shut your mouth and watch God deliver you. Shut your mouth and quit saying what you don't want. Quit condemning your own self. Hallelujah. So crossing in the Red Sea, that when they were running from the Egyptians, they were coming out of bondage. Praise the Lord. When they got to, as we were talking in Joshua, getting ready to cross the Jordan, they were crossing into something. They were crossing into their promise. Guess what? You've got the, the things that will try to keep you where you are, and you've got things that will try to keep you from getting where you want to go. In life, period, not just spiritually, in, in life, period, they would try, you know, uh, your folk that you know, that you know, that you know, they're more comfortable with you being right there where you are. They don't want to see you move. They don't want to see you change because if you change, they got to change. If you change, that disrupts their world. So they're going to put up obstacles to keep you where you are. And if you manage to get out, then there's obstacles that are going to pop up to try to keep you from getting to where you're trying to go. So just know this and know that the power of God will split the Red Sea. The power of God will split the Jordan River. You just got to walk in faith, believing, hallelujah, and receiving the blessing of the Lord. Speak life for the power of life and death is in the tongue. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Praise the Lord. Just want to say that was a powerful message. And uh, we can't wait to see what's going to happen. Because we are speaking life into 2021. Amen. Going up to 2020 strong, knowing that it's a new year ahead. And greater things ahead. Although while the world is looking for more things to to take place with everything that's going on, we're looking at it in a whole nother light. It's a new year for new beginnings mm -hmm. to start over. Amen. To put 2020 behind us and mm -hmm. say, This is our year for prosperity. Amen. 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 Praise our God. Yes. The year of prosperity, the year of release, the year of grace. Amen. What you expect, but mm -hmm. faith is the substance, mm -hmm. the things that are hopeful. hopeful. That expectancy. We got to expect good if we want to <laughs> see. Amen. Whatever you expect, that's what you're going to get. Exactly. Are you expecting what? Are you expecting more issues? Are you expecting uh, to succumb to the situation, circumstances around us? Listen, we can be in the midst of the fire and not even smell like it. Yep. <laughs> Come on now. That's right. So let's move forward. Hallelujah. Let's move forward. Amen. 
I thank God again for you being here with me uh, as we end this last service of 20 and 21, uh, 2020. Our next service will be in 2021. I'm mm. excited. I do want to mention that the um, event that was uh, scheduled for December 20th has been moved to January 10th. Amen. That will be a live event here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Hallelujah. But we will be uh, broadcasting that, that, that event in some kinds of ways, what have you. Um, so again, it's, you know, the releasing of the oil. I love it because it's, it's the year of release and it's releasing of the oil. Amen. I declare war. Yes. yes. I declare, I declare, what is your declaration? Hallelujah. So I, I thank God for the opportunity that uh, Apostle Ramon Mangia has given for me to bring the word. Amen, amen, amen. I would ask that you would also uh, be in prayer for uh, the House of Faith Prayer Ministry. Uh, as I mentioned, their pastor passed um, away unexpectedly uh, last week, and they mm -hmm. are going forward, and they are going forward strong. I am so mm -hmm. proud. They are continuing in the legacy. They're not letting the situation slow them down, but we will be doing the homecoming for that pastor uh, on Wednesday. And I will be um, helping in, in um, one of the um, persons on program uh, for, for that, um, in, in helping in, in celebrating that life. And also that is the day that we are burying my uncle. Mm. Uh, so I will not be there in that service, but if you could be in prayer for the family um, as they lay him to rest in, in Ohio, amen, and uh, also another pastor friend of mine, uh, but her services will be uh, not Wednesday, praise the Lord, but a little later in the week. So I do appreciate you um, being here. If you have, I uh, would like to support the ministry financially. Um, the, I will put up the, the, uh, link in the Facebook chat, uh, in, on the Facebook page, amen, uh, the, but the cash app is dollar sign R-H-O-F-I-N-C, Refine Heart Outreach Fellowship Incorporated, okay, and I will put that in the, in the, uh, on the web page, on the Facebook page, praise the Lord. Any other comments or more, um, Anything that you want to say before we sign off? Amen. Did you want to talk about um, what happened um, the last two days, or did you want to do that off recording? Let me turn the recording off. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. And Facebook, we're going to say...